Hi again, everybody. Welcome back to the Columbus School of Chinese here in Columbus, Ohio, and our show, Ask a Chinese Teacher. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about how mood works in a Chinese language context.、Uh, some people, when they learn that Chinese is a tonal language, they wonder how that works with the tone of the message that you're trying to get across. Doesn't a fourth tone sound angry? Right? How? Ma?、Uh, it depends. Sometimes it sounds angry. If you take another example, the word Australia is four fourth tones right back to back. You can say it angry, and you can say it pleasantly. Al daliya, right? That doesn't necessarily sound angry. So how does tone, in terms of the mood of what you're trying to get across, work? There's a few different ways that、uh, you can get across mood in Chinese. One of them is this assortment of sentence-ending particles that you hear a lot: la, lo, ba, wa, a. Cantonese is famous for having a ton of these to add a ton of extra meaning on the back of a sentence. You can even hear it in things like Singaporean English. Right, they're taking English and putting all that great sentence-ending particle、uh, tools on the back of their English language sentences. You can actually be hungry, lah. I want to go out eat, no? Or something important to tell you, so you can tell here, lah. We need meal. But coming back to Mandarin,、uh, aside from those sentence-ending particles, we have something called Modal verbs. Why are they called modal verbs? Well, because they have something to do with the mood of the action. These are also sometimes called auxiliary verbs because they show up in conjunction with another main verb. They show up before the main verb of the sentence, and that kind of sounds like fancy grammar talk. But I can almost guarantee you've been using some of these modal or auxiliary verbs in your everyday speech, even if you had a semester or so of Chinese. So I guess at its most basic function, modal verbs or auxiliary verbs convey the necessity or the possibility of what should be happening. For example, things like should or must or will. These kind of ideas come across with modal verbs in Chinese. So I have three of these modal verbs that I'm going to be introducing to you guys here today, but this is a far from an exhaustive list. If you want more of these and more information about rules for how to use these verbs, how to negate these verbs, we've included that as part of our monthly subscription package of exercises for our students here. It's a five dollar a month subscription package, and if you're interested in it, I would suggest checking it out on our website and、uh, giving it a try. So the first one I'll talk about here today is 可能可能 Means might might be able to possibly able to. I 我可能去我可能去 I'll possibly go. I might go.、Uh, this is far from definitive. This、uh, I wouldn't stake your plans on a guy who says 我可能去 He might go. He might not. 可能 is our auxiliary verb or modal verb. It comes before the main verb of this clause, which is 去 to go. I might. Go. Next, we have should or ought to. In response to this guy who tells you he might go,、um, you might say, "You should go." 你应该去，你应该去。应该 our auxiliary verb should. 去 remains the main verb of the sentence. Finally, I will go. All right, we have. Definitively told this person this will happen. This will happen. 我会去我会去会 is our auxiliary verb. 去 is our main verb. All right, so there you have it. Those are three very common auxiliary verbs or modal verbs, getting across a mood about the necessity for something or the possibility for something to happen. Again, if you'd like to learn more about modal verbs, we have a great one-page primer with a longer list of them and rules for how to use them in our digital subscription package. If you're interested in learning more about a subscription to our digital package, check it out. I'll put a link in the description below this video. And、um, thank you once again for watching.